we will be talking about long suffering. Again, Ephesians verse 1 and 2 says, I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you, I beg you, to walk worthy of the calling with which you were called, with all lowliness and gentleness, with long sufferings, bearing with one another in love. With long suffering. What does that mean, preacher? It means patience. God has been long suffering toward man. Thank God above that He's been patient with me. Don't you feel the same way? God was long suffering in the days of Noah, Genesis 6, 5 through 7. God saw the wickedness of man. And He was sorrowful. Then He said, I will destroy him, I will destroy man. Then he waited in the days of Noah to build the ark. You said you would, you would destroy it. Remember God's patience. He waited in the days of Noah to build the ark. He waited patiently just at the right time. 1 Peter 3.20 says, Which sometimes they, speaking of those people back in the days of Noah, were disobedient. When once the long suffering of God waited in the days of Noah, while the ark was being prepared, wherein few, that is, only eight souls were saved by water. You know, our sin, God doesn't sweep under the rug. Our sin does, our weakness in Scripture, our, our neglect to follow the Word of God, all these things in our life, God sees, God notices. And yet He's patient. He doesn't like it. But remember, this sermon is on patience, long-suffering. God was long-suffering in His dealings with the nation of Israel. As sinful and rebellious as they were, and they were, idols and all kinds of things, He still, he still took care of them up to a point. Numbers 9, 16-21. All of Israel, all of Israel, God's chosen people, will not enter the promised land from 20 years old and up. Only the little ones would a wood and that's from Numbers 14, 26 through 30. God was angry. God will not put up with it. But He was patient. They walked, they raised their children, but they still were punished. He doesn't forget. He doesn't forget my sins or yours. We have to be willing to change. We have to be willing to first obey the Gospel and become a child of God through baptism into His body. And then we have the beautiful right of repenting. But it's not something flippantly that we do. Oh, sorry. We mean it. God, forgive me. I'll, I'll change. It's so hard for people to do that. It's hard for anybody to change. The people had no patience. They wanted what they wanted. They wanted it now. It didn't happen. So they grabbed, they complained. In other words, they doubted God's love and care. You hadn't answered my prayers yet. They had no thankfulness. And there's so many today that are the same way. They're just unhappy people. You ever seen somebody that's just always unhappy? The Grinch? You know, when I was a kid, my teacher took that and did this. And I thought, how silly. I don't think it's silly anymore. And God is long-suffering today as well. Thank the good Lord that you are long suffering today. 2 Peter 3 7 through 9. But by the same word, the present heavens and earth have been reserved for fire. What? One of these days, the heavens and the earth will be gone in fire. By being kept for the day of judgment and the destruction of the ungodly. God will put up with a lot. But we'll all answer for it one day. Again, sweeping it under the rug or hoping you have enough time that everybody just sort of forgets it. We might forget it, but God don't. Now, dear friends, do not let this one thing escape your notice. Listen up. That a single day is like a thousand years to the Lord. A thousand years is like a single day. You know, it's been 20 years since I did that. I think it's okay now. If a thousand years is like a day to God, that's a few seconds ago. God don't forget. 
You don't forget. Some might think God will sweep our sins under the rug, give it enough time, or we just forget them. It'll be gone. The Lord is not slow concerning His promises as some regard slowness, but is being patient toward you, toward you, and toward you, because He does not wish for any of us to perish. He really does want us all to come to repentance. He wants the worst sinner in the world. The guy that takes this and never really owns it just tells you what he thinks and says. The guy that is out here doing the worst sins that you can think of in the world. And the one that always stands out in my mind, I don't see how he can do it. But God wants him and all the sinners to go to heaven. Just repent and change whatever you need to do in your life to change to follow God's Word. I would, but there ain't no buts. 1 Timothy 1, 15 and 16. He came to save sinners and how long suffering towards us, but let us not test His patience on our part. Ooh. I'm afraid that I have tested God's patience in my life and how scary it is now that I understand God's Word. I was as close to treacherous ground and falling off that slope as you could get and never coming back. I was like Hebrews 6, 4 through 6. I knew the Word, and I started slipping away. I started falling away. And I thank God that I wasn't one of those in verse 6 where I'd gone so far that I couldn't come back. What is the purpose of God's patience or long-suffering? It's simple, boys and girls, that we might have salvation, that we might be saved. It's that simple. 2 Peter 3.15. That we might be led to repentance. He's given us enough time. Sometimes we hang ourselves. And sometimes we feel the tug of the rope and we come back in line. Hopefully we all come to repentance before it's eternally too late. God is long-suffering to those who, who fear Him and keep His commandments that they might delight in His loving kindness, even though they have sinned. When I think of Jesus on that cross, I still see Him in His eyes looking right into my soul. And I'm saying, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. How can you forgive me? You go through all that and then I spit in your face by sins. I can't even understand that love. That's love beyond my grasp. The long-suffering of David is best seen in his dealings with King Saul. You remember David, the guy that sinned all over the place? Saul had made several attempts to kill David. David had several opportunities to kill Saul. That happens in the minds of nearly every person today on earth. I'll get even. In the cave, he could, he could have killed Saul. 1 Samuel 24, 1-22. In the camp, he could kill Saul, 1 Samuel 26, 1-25. But out of respect of the Lord's anointed King Saul, David demonstrated the true meaning of long-suffering, of patience, the slowness of avenging wrongs. Boy, when I see something wrong, my first reaction, I'm going to go take care of it. Well, that's not patience, boy. You might get your way and you might be the worst stumbling block that ever happened. Patience. I want God to be patient with me, but I don't have to be patient with Him. Where do you get that at? So from both God Himself and one who was a man after God's own heart, David. Why how in the world could... David be a man after God's own heart. He sent his own soldier up to be killed. He committed adultery. He lied. He, he repented. You want to be a man after God's own heart? Change. Be willing to repent. We learn what the quality of long suffering involves in 1 Samuel 13 and 14. Now let's consider the necessity in the life of us Christians. We need to be long-suffering, patient if we wish God to be long-suffering and patient. I need to be patient with everybody if I want God to be patient with me. But if I'm going to double my fist up 
and I want it my way, God will have it His way. If I'm quick to judge, He's going to be quick to judge. And if I don't forgive, He don't either. This is all facts. It's hard to apply these things. Easy to apply it to y'all. I just don't want to have to apply it to me. Well, it applies to all of us. So now let's consider the necessity of the life of a Christian. As Jesus illustrated this in the parable of the unmerciful servant, in Matthew 18, 32, 30, 35, patience shows mercy. Without mercy, we will receive none from God, nor forgiveness, nor mercy, nor... And patience all together. I won't, he won't have any patience towards me. I don't want him to be patient towards old John. I want to go to heaven. Colossians 2, 12 through 13. Therefore, the elect of God, who's that preacher? That's the people that follow the Word of God. The elect. Holy and dearly loved, clothe yourself with a heart of mercy. When you look at a real Christian, you can see the mercy, the kindness, the humility, the, the gentleness, and the patience in every step and every move he or her takes. Every time they open their mouth is something of encouragement and love and understanding and patience. And it's beautiful, isn't it? Isn't it beautiful? You know, I, I've never read in the Scriptures that the person that the Bible is describing here talks in a soft voice. But I've met so many that have such a soft, sweet voice. I wish I could do that. I don't have that. Bearing with one another and forgiving one another if someone happens to have a complaint against anyone else. And I think you're pushing it there, preacher. You know, I'll bear with them, I'll forgive them, and all that kind of stuff. But if someone's got a plan to complain against me, I'm going to rebel. I'm coming back. You need to listen to the Scriptures. Just as the Lord has forgiven you, so you also forgive others. How many of us here are quick to come down but don't have the self-control, the patience that it takes to help another brother or sister? To grow someone that has something against you and always will to put up with it because someday they may be your best friend patience is wonderful and this is one sermon I want you to know and I'm not trying to be funny I can't do this because I do three half three I'm working on it I'm not there yet I'm trying some thoughts on the opposite of long-suffering might better be described as one that has no tolerance for anything anybody else does that don't suit them. Shows no self-control. In other words, as far as patience goes, it's like they got a short fuse. Christ has forgiven us, therefore we must be patient or long-suffering and willing to forgive another. We need to be patient if we wish to maintain the unity of spirit. Ephesians 4.3 If we're going to stay in the congregation of the Lord's church, I want to read this again. If we're going to stay in unity a congregation of the Lord's church, we need to be long-suffering, patient, if we wish to maintain that unity of spirit. And if we don't, we won't be here. A task that we faced in keeping with the walk that is worthy of our calling. Ephesians 4, 1 through 3. Without long suffering, the sins that we commit against one another will quickly destroy the unity that Christ Himself died on the cross for. Long suffering and patience is not something we might, well, I might, I might work on it. John, myself, Tell you something, son. You need to get patience. And you better get it quick. Because you don't know when your times are coming. It's necessary for preachers and teachers, but it's also necessary for all the saints. 
Paul charged Timothy to be patient, 2 Timothy 4.2. Paul demonstrated patience, and Timothy followed his example, 2 Timothy 3.10. No servant of the Lord can faithfully correct those in opposition without the quality of long-suffering. Let me tell you what don't work. You're wrong will not work. In the old days, it was easy for somebody they thought it was the right thing to do to say, if you don't do what the Bible tells you, you're going to split hell wide open. Where is the patience in that? Where is the tact in that? Better described, where is the love and the compassion in that? If you don't follow the Word of God, we know we're not going to make it. But you don't act that way out of when you have patience and self-control. It comes out different, doesn't it? 2 Timothy 2, 24 through 26. And a servant of the Lord must not quarrel, not must not quarrel. But he's got to be gentle. Gentle to who? I'll be gentle to most of it. I'm not going to all. Look, you've got to be able to teach. You've got to be patient. You have to be patient. And do it in humility. Be humble. Why be humble, God, if He's wrong? John, look in the mirror. Do you have any sin? Well, yeah. What are you doing about that? Well, I might take care of that later. Right now, I'm taking care of it. Hey, I need to worry about old John, too. I want to go to heaven just like I want John to go to heaven. Humility corrected those who are in opposition. If God perhaps will grant them repentance so that they may know the truth and that they may come to their senses and escape the snare of the devil. Nobody's going to tell me wrong I'm wrong and I'm not moving for no... Escape it. Overcome it. Don't let the devil hold you back. Having been taken captive by him to do his will, don't do it. Proverbs 4.16 For they do not sleep. Who is they? They. Let's figure out who they is. For they do not sleep unless they have done evil. And their sleep is taken away unless they make someone else fall. We have to be careful. We have to be patient. Because if I'm not, I might make someone else fall. God's trying to work through their lives to bring them to repentance. And maybe He's dependent on me to help them and not destroy their chance. Some just have to get what is on their mind, out of their mouth, before really thinking about it clearly. I put this little thing in here so that I could remember it. By patience, Kimisabi. That was on my mind and I couldn't remember where I got it. It came from the Lone Ranger. Be patient, Kimisabi. I remember him saying that. So maybe that makes it true. 2 Timothy 2.21 Therefore, if anyone cleanses himself from the latter, from all my sins and weaknesses, he will be a vessel of honor, sanctified and useful for the Master, prepared for every good work. Oh God, I want to be that. I want to be, I want to be prepared for good work. I want to be successful in my life, Lord. Well, son, you've got to have patience. You have to have patience. The quick reactions don't work when you're trying to save souls. And they don't work in trying to walk in the light. Developing patience. It is love that suffers long. Man, I'll tell you something. My kids, when they do something wrong, I seem to not react as quick and as harsh is if I see your kid doing something wrong. Your kid does. But my kids, I need to be patient with everyone. With everyone. 1 Corinthians 13, 4 through 8, the first part of it is. Unless we love those who have wronged us, there will not be sufficient motivation to bear with them and have patience. If I love somebody, it seems like patience is much easier. If I've got some other kind of personal agenda, I don't have, I don't have any way that I'm going to uh, let them have the upper hand on me. 
Therefore, love is active goodwill. It's fundamental in being slow to avenge wrong. John, be patient. John, be patient. Well, preacher, it's just been so hard. I'm tired of being patient with people. Son, do you want me to be patient with you? Or do you want me to react? Well, no. No, God. I, I want your love. I want your understanding and forgiveness. And son, that's what I want out of you. If you want to go to heaven. We develop patience by growing in love. It is so hard for so many people to even know the real definition of love. Some people can't get that word out of their mouth. Oh, they can't. I, I love this. Or I don't know. I love you. Don't come out of many mouths with sincerity. How would you like to be someone that was like that? Could never tell your children, your wife, your friends, your brothers, your sisters, nobody. Hey, listen, I just want to say one thing. I love you. You know, that could come out of some mouths. They say that some people are there, they're grin, they're going to break their face. If those words come out of some people's mouth, the ceiling might fall in. But we need to work on that, don't we? 1 John 3.16 By this we know love, because He has laid down His life for us. How could you do that for me, Lord? And also we ought to lay down our lives for our brethren. I think we need to take that out, don't you? I'm not going to take a word out. I just want to take a whole verse out because I don't want to be loving all my brothers and sisters. I, they get on my nerves. Hey, I didn't write this. I'm reading it. This is God's Word, not mine. We ought to be able to lay down our lives for each other without any hesitation. And you know, we're all thinking... Well, if they're going to shoot somebody, I'll step in. I'll take them. But no, we're talking something more at home than that. We're thought, talking about me swallowing my pride. We're, we're talking about me actually changing my disposition for a brother or sister. Are you willing to do that? We can also develop patience through prayer. Colossians 1, 9 through 11, Paul evidently believed prayer would help the Colossians to have all patience and long-suffering. With joy. Can you believe that? Well, that's the opposite from pride, isn't it? Putting up with something and love because of love, and it actually gives you joy. It don't keep you up all night. Don't churn your stomach and make you feel joyful because you want a victory. And you know what? You may help win this soul. God who is long-suffering, Psalms 145.8, The Lord is gracious and full of compassion. He's slow to anger and great mercy. We see in Psalms 86, 11 through 15, we are to be like the Lord, full of compassion and patience. Does that describe me? If it don't, me needs to change. Romans 2, 4 through 6. Or you do not despise the riches of His goodness. Do not despise the riches of His forbearance or His patience. Not knowing the goodness of God actually leads us to repentance. Don't begrudge anything you're going through here on earth. Good, bad, or ugly. Because God's trying to get us all to repentance on Judgment Day so He can take us home. But in accordance with your hardness of your impenitent heart, and you are treasuring up for yourself, listen to this. I'm not going to be bothered. You're treasuring up for yourself wrath in the in the in the wrath in the day of wrath and revelation of the righteousness or the righteous judgment of God. That's like a bank, and I keep putting money in the bank. More wrath, more wrath. I'm not changing. I'm not moving. I'm not repenting. I'm getting madder by the minute. I'm going to do what I want. And finally that bank will be full and judgment will come and I'll pay for every penny I put in it. I don't want to do that. Who will render to each one according to his deeds? 
Now, God, don't forget I did one little thing over here. Right. Won't get it. Simple sermon. I hope it's one that we can all look at ourselves. I have to, too. I've had to making this sermon up. Do I fit this, do I fit this picture that God just described? I'll go over it as we do most of the time. The invitation. I want to tell you now how to get to heaven. Of course, most of you already know. The first thing you got to do is hear. My faith cometh by hearing and hearing what? The gospel. Where did I hear it from? The Bible. Yeah, but my preacher said, my mama said, but I don't care what they said. This is it. Including this preacher, just this book. And I believe it with all of my heart in order to please God. Hebrews 11.6 I've got to be willing to stand up against anybody in my life, anything in my life, that goes against what this book says. First of all, I've got to hear it. I've got to open up my ears and say, ooh, let me, am I, do I fit that bill or not? If I don't, then I need to repent. I need to change. Then I need to confess, as the eunuch did in Acts chapter 8, where he wanted it says, Here's water. What hindereth me to be baptized even now? The next verse he says, I believe that Jesus is the Son of God. And that's when they went down into the water and he was baptized. Baptized into the body of Christ. Galatians 3.27 That's the only way you can get in. You cannot join the church. Nobody on earth in the history of mankind has, is, or ever will join the church. I can't vote you in or vote you out. Well, then how do I get in? After you're baptized, you're added to the church by the Lord Himself. Where do you get that? Acts 2.47 says it, son. Oh. Once I've done that, had all my sins washed away, the verse, Acts 2.38. Let me make it simple. In verse 37, they heard the first gospel sermon. What do I do? In other words, what I do to make myself right? Listen how simple this is. You want to go to heaven? Peter says, first thing you do is repent. Can you change everything in your life? Yeah? Okay. Now be baptized. Am I being baptized to show everybody I'm already saved? Let's just stay with the Word, son. Be baptized for the remission of your sins. What does remission mean, preacher? That means removal. See, your sins are not removed till you get here, okay? Repent, be baptized for the remission of your sins. Then it says you receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. What is that? Look at Acts 2.47. You'll be added to the church by the Lord Himself. You will now be a child of God. If you've done that with all understanding, you're ready to go to heaven. If you've done that, you need to repent of being ill-patient. <clears throat> or anything else, come forward as we stand and as we sing.